Welcome to the From Concealment Podcast, the show for firearm enthusiasts who like to shoot, train, carry, and compete. Get ready for some shooting and sight, firearm and accessory reviews, and of course, insight on concealed carry. And now, broadcasting from behind enemy lines in the From Concealment studio, it's Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Hey, Freedom Nation, this is Pete Mitchell. And I am Dan Sams. And you are listening to the From Concealment Podcast. And this episode is being brought to you by FastOC.com. If you are in Southern California, pretty much anywhere in Southern California, and you're thinking to yourself, hey, I want to get some good training in, uh, maybe go to a handgun challenge, anything like that, you want to head on over to FastOC.com. They got all kinds of great training and handgun challenges I unfortunately have not been to a handgun challenge in what feels like three or four weeks. I'm going through withdrawals over here. Yeah. I couldn't go last week. They had one last week. In fact, it looked really fun because I was watching all the videos online and I'm thinking to myself, I should be there. I yeah. Should be pulling the trigger with them. So, yeah. Head on over to fastoc.com. Normally, you'll see me at a handgun challenge. I just haven't been there uh, due to circumstances beyond my control. But uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, Dan, what's going on, man? Oh, man, I actually, so normally I think you're the one who's getting in more shooting than me. But over the past few weeks, I've been getting in more shooting. Um, I just had the wonderful opportunity. It's been cold too, but I didn't care. I got out of the range, um, had a buddy of mine came over. We did some shooting last week. So I have been uh, doing a lot of target plinking, you know, just 22 LR stuff, having a good time with that. And uh, it's been good, man. I just, I never get tired of it. I'm, you know, I'll go and I'll burn up a few hundred rounds shooting 22 LR and watching those spinner targets go all day long. And I'm, I'm a happy man. So That's I've awesome. been able to be at the range and it's been good. Um, and buddies at the range too. I've had some other guys out, did some, you know, did some shooting with them and that, that makes it even more fun to get somebody else there. Yeah. I just, uh, our church in their bulletin yesterday, was like, hey, we got a church shooting day coming up here in a couple of weeks. We're all going nice. to go over to the range at uh, Saturday in the morning. And heck yeah, I'm like, all right, I'm down with that. Yeah, that's that's a rarity to hear about. In that's in when California, I know I'm in the man. right church, man. That's when I know <laughs> I'm in the right church. You, you found a good place, man. Well, how many even here in Ohio? There's a lot of churches that wouldn't do that because they're all worried. Um, actually, when my church does it, I don't do it as the church. I'll invite people over personally and I'm inviting everybody from the church, but I'm like, come over for man night. And we do where we grill and we go shooting and we'll have, I think we had 60 some people here the last time. Which, I remember seeing that and thinking to myself, should I fly out to Ohio for this? You, yeah. Well, I think we're going to do it again here. Cause the weather is about to break. Like we're coming into where it's like, we're starting to get some like 40 some degree weather, which is warm enough to go out and shoot. Um, and so I think probably, late March here. We're probably going to plan a day and have everybody over to shoot. It's going to be good. Nice. You can fly out, man. Come out. Got a, got a place for you to stay. Totally good. I love comfortable. It. I love plenty it. of plenty of room to shoot. It'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Someday, someday we might have to invite some of the freedom nation out. Like we build the freedom nation up a little bit. We get to the right spot. I think we could have an official shooting day for the freedom nation at an undisclosed location. If we had it at my house, it would, it would it would have the alphabet boys a little bit too interested in what was going on. We'll have to go somewhere. Yeah, I was just thinking, I don't think yeah. you could do that in California just because you couldn't take anything fun. <laughs> yeah. Like, you just really could like <laughs> before the podcast started, guys, behind Dan is this great <laughs> ironwork of an AK forty seven. And I'm looking at that. And my joke to Dan was, I go, yeah, the problem is I couldn't have that here in California because it's not California compliant. It's got a pistol <laughs> grip, uh, maybe a flash hider on the end. Uh, you know, we can't have that kind of stuff here. It's yeah. called an assault weapon. Woo. So you should have seen me getting that back in the country because I got that in El Salvador. And so I'm flying in. TSA had some real interesting questions. So like, what's in that? And I'm like, it's wall art. And I'm like, it's, I mean, it's not a firearm. Come on. So took some talking, but they, they let it go through without too much trouble. Um, yeah. But it yeah, what do you mean what's me... in that? It's, it's literally know. wire. Yeah. When I had it folded in like cardboard box, like around it, I mean, it's so thin. I'm like, that can't be anything dangerous, but um, no, yeah, they, they just saw it on the x-ray and are like, it's a, 
it's a AK-47. I mean, you could totally tell what it is. I know, yeah. Uh, I did not mention, like, I was ready to play dumb. Like, what are you talking about? Because I just didn't want any any heat on the thing. So we got through, though. It was all right. Yeah, that's cool. It's good fun. Cool. So what's yeah. our uh, topic today? You mentioned it right before we started. Oh, man, I think we need to talk about the news reporting on the Boogaloo. Mm. And I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to open this up with caution because, um, I'm already noticing the way that language is being used to communicate anything related to the second amendment or freedom or defending freedom. You can very, very quickly get labeled as a violent extremist, or unfortunately they're trying to add on the whole other unfortunate, terrible, unwelcome moniker of racism with it. And so we're in a we're in a world where a lot of things are being communicated deceitfully yeah. um, in order to make freedom loving people, good old Americans, look bad. And so I thought I would pull up uh, a recent article and just kind of point out some of the things that come up in it, and and maybe hopefully clear up. You know, maybe we've got some people that uh, they're listening and they're you know a little bit critical of the freedom movement to be able to give some clarification for them. And then for the guys out there that maybe don't know how, how they're being, un, uh, they're being connected with something that, that they're not really connected with. Mm. So sound good. Feel like, yeah, let's do it. We can talk about that and hopefully we don't get ourselves into too much trouble. Um, so I've noticed this has been a couple of times and I'll, I'll kind of give some context. One is during the, uh, uh, during the protest in Virginia, which, by the way, some good news, uh, the quote unquote assault weapons ban did not go through in Virginia. Um, so for now, you can have your standard capacity magazines, your um, semi-automatic ARs, all that kind of stuff still legal. Uh, they, they have, however, passed the red flag laws. So things are still bad in Virginia. But um, not as bad as we'd expected. So anyway, uh, many of you guys might remember that protest that was going on uh, way back in January. And every time there was a comment from Northam or a lot of times from various news agencies, they were saying things like, we don't want it to be another Charlottesville, quote unquote, quote unquote, which was a reference to many of you guys remember the Charlottesville, uh, whatever demonstration that was all the far right fascist, Nazi, I'm trying to think of a Christian word to use for such despicable people. Like, <laughs> like the, that whole movement is a terrible thing and has nothing to do with uh, the freedom movement uh, that's pro-gun. If you looked at any of the images, any of the pictures of what was going on in Virginia, um, it was diverse. We actually talked about it on the show. A lot of different types of people there. There were black people, there were women, there were men, uh, people from all different walks of life. And so I noticed back then, I'm like, man, they are working hard to try to make a connection between in believing in gun freedom and somehow being a Nazi mm. when there is no legitimate connection. And so that right there, I'm like, man, this is, and it wasn't just once, it was multiple news, uh, news stories, multiple comments where they were just mention the two things together. Like, oh, we don't want this to be another Charlottesville or we're, we're keeping an eye out for the, for the far right. And I'm like, what? why do you need to say that? Like, that would be like, you know, me stopping by Pete's house and saying like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just keeping an eye out to make sure there is no drug dealing going on here. It's like, well, we have no reason to think that that's happening. Why would I bring it up? But then if I go on the news and say like, well, Pete and I got together and we were watching out, I was watching out to make sure that there were no drug dealing going on at Pete's house, that Pete wasn't, and it's like, well, now it's making it look like he's doing something that he's not. So all that, I don't know, is that an ample background for this news story, Pete? Any, yeah. any thoughts you have so far, by the way, because I don't want to dominate the conversation. No, but I think that's intentional on pretty much anybody who does that. I mean, that's a, that's an old marketing ploy that we use. Oh, yeah. The media just does it as well. And that's, if we bring this up, then now we've defined what the conversation is. It yes. doesn't matter if it's real. It doesn't matter at all if it's yeah. real. But, you know, we're just going to go ahead and say, well, we're going to keep our eyes open for this because now we've basically labeled everybody who joins us as racist, white supremacist, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so now that catches everybody up. I think we can mention we have used the term boogaloo on here. 
And I would imagine most of our, the big igloo, the boogaloo, the big luau, most of our listeners, I would imagine, at least know what we're referring to when we say boogaloo. Um, we're talking about the situation. This is very important that we define this, that if uh, freedom-loving uh, constitutional Americans are attacked or if force is used to cause them or their families harm, even if it is for the purpose of taking away their firearms, they're going to, de- they're going to respond by defending themselves. Um, as which is is their constitutional right to do, and so anytime we bring that up, the joke is that it's 1776 to Electric Boogaloo, and if you're familiar with the old breakdance movie, that's where all this is from. So this terminology through memes has just kind of gone into all kinds of things, and I won't say all of the various titles, but Boogaloo is generally referring to, hey, if we end up having to defend ourselves against gun confiscation or against whatever, this is this loose term for whatever, even in the sense of a nonviolent defense that like, hey, Boogaloo is like, I'm, I'm doing everything I can to try to keep this from happening. That whole movement built together. Now, if you follow that movement, some of the prominent names, actually, I shouldn't name too many, but you're going to see guys like um, Maj Touré from Black Guns Matter. Uh, you're going to see uh uh, Chad and the other the other dudes from Iraq veteran eighty eight eighty eight, um, me, uh, just a big variety of pro gun pro freedom people who seem to really care about each other and have nothing to do with any type of fascism, and so as you kind of go through it, every now and then you will hear about um, you know like the reporting from the last uh, from the protest you'll hear about there's some attempted association between uh, racism and the Boogaloo. And so what ends up happening then is you see this whole influx of memes denouncing racism. Um, and, and so it's really fun to see the only time you see a Boogaloo meme that even mentions any type of racism, it is in the, in the realm of making sure that those guys never have a place in the movement because this is a diverse, pro-freedom, ethnically diverse movement. So all that then, when I read this article on uh, NBCnews.com, uh, from, it was actually from February 19th by Brandy Zedronsky. Um, I'm saying his name wrong, I know. Uh, but they go through this whole thing and they do a whole article on the Boogaloo and trying to explain, which actually is pretty comical, uh, trying to explain where the term came from. And it reminded me, Pete, by the way, of uh, during the, uh, the whole... Uh, raid Area 51 thing where they're trying to explain what Naruto runners are to security. I don't know if you saw any of that. There's all kinds of comical stuff going on here. But what really gets me is, again, they're trying to make a connection to white nationalism or to race war or to whatever else and trying to connect that to a movement that has nothing to do with it. And so I just felt like it's worth noting there is an, a very concerted effort to try to cast a shadow on what is a good movement um, and trying to associate it with things that are actually the opposite of what's involved. So I don't know. Any thoughts, Pete? I just wanted to make sure we're bringing attention to that. Uh, no, I, I think that's a good, uh, that's a good foundation. Yeah. So here's my question, Pete. Um, you are a marketing wizard. I am a marketing Padawan. And um, how do freedom-loving people like us make sure that we are reestablishing a correct narrative? What kind of suggestions do you have for the regular freedom fighter? Though, let's not use that word. Uh, the regular freedom-loving guy who sees this kind of stuff and says, hey, man, that's not me. How does the average person communicate clearly what we're about when we talk about gun freedom? That's a loaded question because I think there's yes. a, it's a multi-pronged uh, offensive, if you will, yeah, because it, it's not as simple as one little thing that you can do. I mean, it, it might be for you as an individual, one simple thing, but the, the narrative that they're trying to paint and are going to be successful painting it, they will be successful because first of all, um, Social justice slogans are very promotable. They're tweetable. They're very quick, you know, um, just like it was as simple as, uh, you know, we're keeping our eye out for the far right at this. 
We yeah. don't want to have a, a Charlottesville happen again. I mean, mm-hmm. little things like that. When it's tweetable like that, I mean, just the accusation. Yeah. Of it. It's like an old trick in politics. You know, someone will say something uh, about someone, and then a couple of days later, well, I don't actually think that. I just heard that is what they'll say. Right, right. Because they already yep. got it to go out there, and the yeah. media – Right leaning, left leaning, doesn't matter. Media cares about itself, period. Yeah. Yep. And they are in the business of making money. And the way that they make money in today's day and age is ad views. Yep. So, literally on the internet, every time you click on an article and that ad flashes up, they're making money. Yep. Now, it's a fraction of a cent, but times millions of people, they start to make real money. Yeah. All they care about are the click throughs. That's the reason why it's so mm-hmm. clickbaity, the titles, things like that. So merely the accusation is yeah. going to get millions of articles written yeah. because they make money with the clickbait. And again, it yeah. doesn't matter if it's right or left, right? They both play the same game. Yeah. Breitbart's making money the same way as CNN yeah. ads. So it, it doesn't matter which side you're on. So that's why I say it's, it's, it's a complicated thing. There are uh, many factors, many uh, uh, fronts, if you will, in this this particular offensive. Um, I would love to see, uh, you know, basically fighting fire with fire. So I'd love to see it come right back at them. Of, uh-huh. but then you know, the problem is everyone just looks at them as sore losers, right? Because it's like yeah. you got a guy with a white hood on in a picture, it doesn't matter why he's there. It doesn't matter who he's with. All it takes is one picture and you've now defined an entire organization, an entire movement yeah. by that one image. Yeah. So it's an uphill battle, man. I don't, yeah. I don't know that it is that simple as, you know, saying certain things or doing certain things. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, one of the things that crosses my mind in all of this is, you know, you were describing the like guy in the white hood thing. Governor Northam in Virginia is actually pictured <laughs> that same kind of picture you're describing. Um, and it hasn't seemed to hurt him in the way that we all would have thought it would. Well, that's um, because he's a Democrat. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. He can get away with a lot yeah. more than anybody like Democrats on their face cannot be racist. Yeah. They're just not allowed to be. They're not. Al- well, they count. can't be. They can't it be because it just doesn't count. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, that's the party of inclusion. I don't yeah. care that it's all white people running <laughs> for president. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, <laughs> wait a minute. Elizabeth Warren is one 1,024th Native American. <laughs> Have you seen that picture of the really fat white guy who's wearing uh, uh, some fatigues and it says, I'm one 1,024th Navy SEAL? <laughs> yeah. I like, there's so many, there's so many good, that, that generated a whole like genre of memes when that came out and it was hilarious. I don't and here's care the thing. if I'm not Native American, I believe I'm Native American. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, and what's nuts is that like, that didn't hurt her that much, right? Like she's still a, one of the primary contenders in, you know, the democratic primary and like those kind of things just boggle my mind i remember when johnny cash said he was native american and afterwards and when he's like man i was just high when i said that (laughs) okay you're you're gonna love this man all right so i literally just voted this morning oh really we got a primary coming up oh i'm a i'm a permanent absentee uh, ballot guy so i got it in the mail filled mine out filled my wife's out i get two votes and yeah but here's the thing I am <laughs> what you say. <laughs> well, my wife still had to sign it. So she's, Oh yeah. It. So she's just supporting it. I follow you. You're good. Yeah. You're good. She, she asked, she makes me give her the form when she goes into the, the pull the lever anyway. Right. So, right. I mean, that's, yeah. she's like, tell me how I'm voting. Here you go, hun. Right. So nice. I, I love it. Right. <laughs> that's awesome. But here's the thing. Yes. We're actually registered differently. She's registered as a Republican. I'm registered as what they call declined a state, meaning I have no political party affiliation. Mm -hmm. I like that. Here in California, you're going to love this. I almost shouldn't say this because this is so crazy. But so here in California, when you are declined a state, certain political parties will allow you to vote in their primaries. You just Mm -hmm. have to declare, hey, I'm going to vote in their primary. One of those political parties 
happens to be the Democratic Party. <laughs> so I voted as a Democrat for the primary. And nice. uh, I had to pick my candidate for president. So I look at my options under the Democrat, Democratic primary, and I ask myself, who do I think is so bad that if this person were to win the primary, there is no way they win the general. There's just no way the rest of the Democrats could get behind this person. This person is so crazy. So let me ask you, who do you think that would be out of everybody running? Uh, see, that changes every day. I, I would have thought the craziest person that no Democrat could get behind was going to be, or that not enough of them would be Bernie Sanders. Well, now he's winning. So He's winning, but I don't believe in the general. He has any chance. Yes. So you're... I think he will absolutely win the primaries because there's yeah. enough of the fringe to get him in. Yeah. I don't know that he'll get, because it's so rigged, right? The Democrats are worse than the Republicans. Oh, yeah. The Republicans are bad, but the super yeah. delegates, oh, because my. of the it's super delegates, like I, I don't know that he'll get it, but I gave him my vote. So I actually <laughs> voted for Bernie Sanders. Nice. Because I was like, there is no way that guy wins in the general. Now, if he does... Yeah. I'm going to feel awful, but I'm in California. Like it even matters what my vote is. Cause yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so that reminds me of uh, what happened during the general election. Uh, wait a minute. No, no, no. I'm sorry. It was primaries. The um, I was waiting to vote primaries back in. Uh, I don't remember what year, whatever year that um, uh, what's her name. Hillary was running in the primary against uh, Obama. And the guy that, um, you know, I didn't like who had already been nominated for the Republicans. By the time the day had gotten to where it was, we already knew who the Republican nominee was going to be. And so I'm like, I'm going to go and vote Democrat because in Ohio, you can vote either way. And I'm like, I'm going to vote Democrat for whoever I think is going to be the easiest to beat. So that was how I ended up voting for Hillary the one time in my life. And even that just still feels slimy and a mess. It's funny, man. Yeah. It, look at look at the games we play. I love oh, it. I know. I yeah. love that oh, we take advantage yeah. of this. Well, do you know about Rhett E. Boogie? No. Okay. So um, let's just say I have heard um, through... Well, because I am a class three meme lord. Um, I'm, I'm way low. I'm not a real one. Very seldom have I even generated any type of a meme. And I don't run any pages because whatever. But as a class tier, well, we'll say tier three meme lord, I can tell you that I have come across this whole movement for writing in candidate Rhett E. Boogie. Um, so if you feel like you really are ready boogie, yeah, you're right in, Red E Boogie, and we're going to be watching the uh, watching the polls. And if we get past, let's say it's past, like oh, some people have said, I'm not saying I'm doing this, but if if the polls say you know that it's more than six percent for Red E Boogie, then that that just lets some people know what what's about to go down. And so, Ready Boogie, when it's down, when you if you're like, man, I don't want to vote for I I can honestly tell you in almost every major election of the last 15 years, I have written in my presidential candidate vote. Yes, I've nice. almost never like the last one that I could remember I voted for that was on the ticket. I I want to say it was McCain when he was going against Obama. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I did it, cause I'm not a McCain fan, yeah. but I was like, no one will understand when I say I voted in Alan keys or something like that. <laughs> so, <I'm> like, <laughs> so I just need to let everybody know I was not voting for Obama. So I voted yeah. for McCain. There you go. That's, and, but yeah, normally it's like yeah. I'm voting in Alan keys. I'm voting in, yeah. you know, someone from the constitution party. I mean, yeah. 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 I, um, yeah, I I last time I think I voted third party just for the sake of seeing what would happen, um, and yeah, and I, sometimes I'm not kidding. I write in Jesus. <laughs> oh, do you really? Uh, sometimes I'm like that's I, a much shorter name than usually. I'm sitting there because we have this crazy like dial, and you got to yeah. literally dial it in. Like you got to go over to the A and then back to. I mean, oh yeah, it is. It is. I don't know. I, our voting machines are crazy, but at least they have a paper ballot that yeah. goes with it. Cause I don't, they're too easy to, to 
too to easy hack. to mess like, with. Like way man. too easy to hack. Way, way, way too easy, man. It's yeah. yeah. So no, I we'll see. I'm I'm thinking about uh thinking about maybe Red E Boogie uh or Jesus. That's where I'm at this year. I think what they should do, like if you really wanted to have a fair and open election, they need to do for a 24 hour period. It's open for election. Yeah. Nationwide. Yep. The problem is like those of us out here on the West, we know who's won by the time we're done with work because Mm -hmm. the East coast is already done. You know, they're three hours ahead and then you got the central And it's like, that's the reason why voter turnout is so low in California, Oregon, Washington, Alaska, yep. Hawaii, because it's like, well, we already know who won. Yep. So what's the point of, of going to vote? If you did it where it was a fixed 24 hours nationwide, mm-hmm. and let's say it's, you know, starts at 7 a.m. in Washington and, you know, whatever that is, three hours earlier here in California, whatever, and it goes for 24 hours. You got yep. 24 hours again. No one knows. No one knows you can't, I mean, you can use your exit polls, but exit polls are stupid because people who go to work are like, leave me alone. I got to go to work. Yeah. Which is why they happen to favor one political party over another. Cause one, never mind. That's yep. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, they could do things like that if they really wanted to, even the idea of red state versus blue state, like people don't remember this, but Republicans used to be blue. Like when Reagan won his second term, it was, they even said it's an ocean of blue because there was one yeah. state that was red for the Democrats. All the rest were blue. And you go, well, yeah. why was it blue for Republicans then? And now and it's red. switched. Well, because they basically said, hey, as Democrats, we don't want to be red because red's a negative color. We want to be blue. And they literally just switched it. Huh. So that way they wouldn't be the red one. And that's mm-hmm. how Republicans are now considered red. Which has always been confusing to me because, I mean, just being really honest, right now we're really dealing with two socialist parties. The uh, yes. Republicans and Democrats are both socialist. However, for a long time, and even still, the Democrats have been leaning the most socialist. Even now, for crying out loud, like they're right now, their forerunner is a known socialist. He's admittedly so. So I'm like, red is supposed to go with communism. So like, yeah. why wouldn't the Democrats just, I mean, come on, man. Like, let's just be honest. Like it's red working. makes more sense for you, uh, you know, and blue is whatever. Like there's it's not marketing. really a great. It's literally yeah. marketing. Yeah. So it's nuts and it makes me frustrated. So, yeah. oh, well. So anyway, um, voting is coming up. All the news about the boogaloo, people are being kind of crazy. So um, be, be freedom loving. Talk to your neighbors about freedom. Um, <laughs> hey, let me ask you, what do you think yeah. about Virginia's red flag laws? So they, 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 oh, they didn't pass the, uh, the assault weapon ban, yeah. but they did the red flag. So what, yeah. give us your opinion. Well, I think red flag laws are awful for so many reasons, as everybody knows. Um, And I I will tell you, I have not been able to get the detail on what what exactly is going to be entailed in this particular red flag law. So like I'll admit, like I'm speaking on red flag laws in general. I'm I'm not yet fully familiar with the Virginia red flag laws and what kind of nuances there might be. But in general, red flag law is referring to someone can call in what they perceive to be an offense that you have made um, related to weapons you own or whether or not you're safe to own weapons. And you can get raided. Um, they can take away your guns uh, with no uh, with no real cause based other only on somebody next door saying they didn't like you. Um, we've already run into issues where people have weaponized red flag laws yep. to harm someone they didn't like. And this gets real tricky if you know how some of these raids work. Man, there's a lot of dangerous stuff going on. And a guy coming in, ATF or state trooper or whatever it is, whoever it is coming in in a stack, their first priority is staying alive. And if they're knocking down your door and they're coming in to seize your weapons or seize you because they think someone has said that you're going to be a harm to yourself or to others, man, I'm telling you, their first goal is not to keep you alive. Their first goal is to stay alive themselves. And I understand 
You read, read Tactical Advantage by Gabriel Suarez. Like, I mean, that whole, and he's right. Like he's, all of their training is designed to make sure you neutralize the threat or whatever you perceive to be a threat and you keep yourself and your buddies alive. You are at a distinct disadvantage. All you have to do is have something in your hand, in your own home at night while you're asleep. You don't have to do anything wrong and they can come in and shoot you and it's considered your fault. Yeah. Um, red flag laws are unconstitutional. They skip over due process. They're so easy, as we already mentioned, to be used by somebody who just doesn't like you. Um, for crying out loud, some woman red flagged the cop who shot her son in whatever kind of a, some kind of an, I forget where that one took place. Like it's just a bad deal all around. It that might actually everybody. be a good way to get our, our cops unarmed. Well, you know, you know, part I'm of in our, California, we've yeah. had red flag laws for a long time out here. <laughs> well, you know that like part of the movement um, for freedom has been to post the names and addresses of, and I'm not, rec- I'm not saying this is a good thing, but people are doing this where they're posting names and addresses of politicians and saying, here's the guy who's taking your guns. Feel free to red flag him anytime you want. I'm not saying you should do that, but I'm saying that like that is an illustration of how it can get used to just weaponize against just people you don't like. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's scary that, and, and I think the, the part that bothers me the most of all of this is that it is so clearly unconstitutional. Yeah. And I don't just mean a violation of the second amendment. I mean, a violation of fourth, fifth, 10th, um, almost everything Fourth, except for the third. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the reality is they don't care. Yeah. Or they look at it and they go, well, we're just trying to keep everyone safe. Like everything is in the name of safety. I hate that. So yeah. we're literally, you're going to, first of all, I've never seen a judge who has uh, shut down a company or, you know, because they've, they've been petitioned, hey, you know, we think these guys are doing something bad. Let's shut them down yeah. or, you know, whatever. Uh, take away someone's guns. I've never seen a judge then actually look at the evidence later and then reverse themselves. Oh, you know what? I made a mistake. They gave me bad information. Oh, yeah. This was a bad decision on my part. Um, I'm going to give them back their firearms. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Once never they happens. take them away, you're not getting them back. Don't never this again. whole, oh, you get to petition and fight. No, that's a lie. It doesn't mean anything. You, it's yep. gone. It's done. Yep. You're out. Yeah. And, well, and that's wrong. Yeah. It is absolutely wrong. First of all, just put it aside everything else. It's your personal property. On top of it, it's property designed for you to be able to defend yourself. And it is absolutely a God-given right, not to mention a right that is um, protected by the Constitution. Here's the thing I would tell. Let's say that, that you know, we've got somebody who's listening in because they hate guns and they just want to find reasons to, you know, argue against us. Let's say one, you're, you're one of those people, you're anti-gun, you're whatever, and you're hearing about this and red flag laws seem fine to you because you don't like gun owners or you don't like guns. Understand that everything the government does creates a precedence for what they're going to be able to do next. Yeah. And so right now it's, it's taking away guns. Um, it could very easily be used for anything else. It can, and, and this is where it's going to turn into now your free speech is going to be gone. Um, the idea of you said something that um, was you know, contrary to what somebody else believed and or maybe it violated some rule now that we have about not speaking about you know, certain uh, leaders and you get red flagged over an opinion you have or over a book you have or over a whatever else, over the, or a meme the type you of person you are or a meme you posted. Or maybe, and maybe you're red flagged over a particular viewpoint you have about, um, about, I don't know, like sexuality, right? So many of these things very quickly, any, now any form of dissent, not just the possession of a firearm can get uh, attacked with a red flag law. And this is where, this is where it's important. We fight for everybody's freedom, not just our own. And I would say that like, man, um, I like the second amendment. I'm really thankful for the, the ability to defend myself and just enjoy target shooting. I also want, man, if, if there was a guy next door to me who was leaning more socialist and was making a big deal out of it, and somehow there was a law against him saying those things, I would fight for his ability to say those things. I would tell him he's wrong and he's just foolishness, but 
I would never want him to be able to get red flagged because of what he was saying. Right. Yeah. Um, actually, and I'll go so far as to say, I don't want somebody to get red flagged because they got marijuana in their house, <laughs> right? Like it's still wrong. Um, and I'm standing up against that just like I am. In fact, I was already doing that before it, it even came up for guns. State? Not exactly. Okay. No, not really. We, um, it's a long, complicated story. I'm sure it will be eventually, but, um, right now, not really. So yeah. So red flag laws, man, they're causing damage and they're going to cause more damage and it's going to get worse. Um, yeah. unless something changes. So, yeah. So I don't know. Do you have any thoughts, Pete, on that? No, I mean, it- <laughs> everything that we talked about, it's, it's, it's something that we live under in fear here in California because we've had them for a long time. And, uh, I I don't think it matters what part of California you live in. I mean, a cop has no problem taking away your firearm. Like, okay, great. I got an order here. I'm going to go take away your firearm. No problem. I'm taking it away. Yeah. Because if I'm a cop, that's one less gun that could be used against me. Sure. So of course I take it away. Yeah. Well, and the reality kind of, is what they're doing though, is they're participating in unconstitutional actions and they don't have a problem with that. That's, that's again, another yeah. issue. Our politicians don't have a problem passing these laws. Our police don't have a problem enforcing them. Yeah. I mean, which, you know, which, you, you see yeah. some of these sheriffs every once in a while saying, Hey, this is now a second amendment sanctuary state or County or whatever. Yeah. I don't, I hope they mean it. I they mean so. it in California. Yeah. I wouldn't believe a one of them, not a single yeah. one of them in California, if they were well, to say it. Here's the thing I'll say to, and I'll, I'm, I'm going to say this, recognizing there's some good news out there that that they're telling me right now they wouldn't enforce those laws. I sure hope that they mean it. But the reality is, if if you're a law enforcement officer or a national guardsman or whatever else, you've taken an oath to defend the Constitution. If you enforce a, a gun law, you are you are an oath breaker. And that's a serious thing. Like put aside, like you're breaking the one oath that is associated with your job. And, and they'll say, well, I'm just doing my job and doing what I'm told. No, that's just you. The constitution supersedes whatever boss you have. Like the constitution is our rule of law. That's what we're subject to. If you are willing to obey whatever other random law, you have to recognize that you are violating your oath to the constitution. And that's not okay. And um, so take a stand, man. I, I would love to see more resources for police officers that say, no, I'm not going to do this. Uh, I would love to, for them to be um, supported, backed, legal aid, whatever it takes, um, because I have a feeling if there are, I'm hoping that there's a few of them, but I'm not sure that there's very many. But if there were, um, they're going to be in hot water if they stand for, for, for the freedom. So so here's, here's the question. Uh, man. Here's the question that I got. Yeah. With the big igloo. The large ice shelter, yes. With the red flag laws. Yeah, buddy. With the coronavirus that is just growing leaps and bounds. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen, man? Dude, you're trying to get me to put on my tinfoil hat. I know. I'm, just, I'm just curious. I'm yeah. just curious. So, um, I man, if I'm being really honest... Um, I am simultaneously watching. So we've, we've been having freedom erosion for so long and we know that crises are used to take away more freedom. That's the MO man. Bad thing happens. Doesn't matter what it's about. All of a sudden freedom's taken away. Um, I am certain that they will parlay the, uh, coronavirus issue to limit freedom somehow. Um, don't know how yet, don't know how bad it's going to get, but they're always going to find a way to limit freedom with that. Um, when I think about the red flag laws, man, um, I am, I'm just acknowledging, unfortunately, most of the time people aren't willing to stand up and defend their freedom. Right. Um, so I'm not going to get too, I'm not going to assume people are going to go too nuts. However, I have never seen the type of communication I'm seeing now. Um, it's no longer just funny memes. Um, people are sharing tactics. People are sharing um, plan- <laughs> various plans. They're, they're, the ways they're going to say, all right, if this happens, we do this. If this happens, we do this. If this happens, we don't do anything. Um, I haven't seen talk like that before my whole life. Um, 
in related to anything freedom. I have not heard that type of uh, planning. And all of it, I'm going to acknowledge, I'm going to make it very clear, all of it is peace-oriented. All of it is like, I don't want to do anything. Nobody is proactive on it. Everybody's like, but if you come to my house with guns and you plan to cause me or my family physical harm over something I'm legally allowed to have, I'm going to defend myself. And that's the case no matter who is coming. Um, I'm saying all this in the context of this is what I'm hearing people say. Right, right. Um, uh, that um, that that's just the I I haven't heard people talk like that in a while ever in my whole life. I haven't heard people talk like that. Mean. I've heard the like joking guys like, "Oh, they ever come for our guns?" Blah blah blah. And then I'm like, "Whatever, you're a fud. You're not going to do anything." Yeah, yeah. But now I'm like, um, we're talking about like guys who have seen action. We're talking about. Iraq and Afghan vet, Afghanistan vets that are like, um, yeah, here's what we're going to do guys. And they're, they, they have plans and, um, I haven't heard it talk like that. So I don't know if anything's going to happen, but it's more likely than ever. Um, I, I, th- I think that can be easily stated. It's a powder keg, man. It's a powder yeah, keg. Man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, and, and then you com- you couple all that with, um, we have more people than ever. Uh, I should I need to say this carefully. Um, more young people are less interested in their long-term living plans. Is that a right way to say that? Talk to the average millennial about like what his long-term plans are. Not, not a thing like it used to be. It used to be like, I want to have marriage. I want to have kids. Um, we've got guys that are not yet done with college that are overrun in debt and they're watching bad things happen in their country. They are less excited about their futures. And you take a man, I uh, assume scripture says that where, where there is no vision, people perish. Um, we're talking about people who are less excited about living long and they are really pissed off about it. Um, and that that kind of thinking, anybody who starts looking into our, our finances as a, you know, like the national debt and how all that works, people start looking at that and they're like, why bother saving money? Why bother planning anything? Inflation's going to kill all this anyway. So like, maybe I go out fighting and that, that, that's the thing that's getting a little bit scary is there are guys that it's not just about they're angry, they're angry and they don't have as much to live for as they as their parents thought they did, or at least that's their thinking, which is why I always come in from a ministry perspective and say like, you got a lot to live for, man. But you get somebody like that, that does not have as much regard for their own life um, or anybody else's that danger is, is ahead. Interesting. Yeah. That's, that's my, that's my thinking on it. Um, And I have mixed feelings about it all, man. Because there are days where I'm like, let's bring back the freedom. And then I'm like, man, I really love peace. I really do. Um, But I really hate what can happen in the effort to just keep the peace. Um, What kind of terrible things people get away with. Um, Yeah, it's not good. So we'll see what happens. For me, it means a lot of prayer for for God to move. But um, yeah, man, that's where I'm at on it all. Yeah. You got any thoughts? What, you think I'm way out to lunch? Or no, you? no, no. Unfortunately, I don't think you're way out to lunch. I think that's that's part of the problem. I think, uh, yeah. yeah, I just, I, I think we got, we have interesting times to say the least ahead of yeah. us. Yeah. And I look at the coronavirus and we don't really know how bad it is. One, we don't really know because China is not going to tell us the truth. Yeah, yeah. But we're starting to see it crop up all over the place, right? Iran. Uh, yeah. They they literally just moved a bunch of people with coronavirus uh, just a couple of miles from me. <laughs> I know, right? Awesome. And yeah, exactly. And it's just like, okay, what is going on? Of course, I was joking with my buddy this morning. And I go, yeah, but you know, the good news that could happen is maybe California finally disintegrates and it's gone. I go, granted, that means we go with it, but I think that's a fair trade-off to get rid of California. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. But yeah. I'm Don't like, die, Pete. Yeah, I'll be the the lone survivor, right? <laughs> but yeah. I, I look at all of that and I'm like, man, you know, does does coronavirus trigger something? It could. If it goes really bad, right? Like if if the numbers end up yeah. being far worse than what they're saying, you know, oh. uh we were talking well, about this this morning. Um, there's an area, I don't remember where it was now, but they're claiming they have 50 cases and they've had 12 deaths. 
well, that's not two and a half percent. No, not at so all. So that means one of two things. <laughs> Either there's a lot more than 50, they just don't know about them, or the kill ratio of coronavirus is a lot higher than that's the two and a half percent. That's more than 20%. And that's right now, yeah. right? That's yeah. just right now. Yeah, man. So yeah. what is it really? I mean, are we going to have... <laughs> You know, I was joking this morning. I go, yeah, but every good society needs a good plague every once in a while. Just, you know, clear it out, <laughs> start well, it all over. So, so I was talking to someone close to me whose expertise is infection control. Like that's what this person does for a living for like the last 30 years. And I was talking about it, some of the coronavirus things. And I'm like, well, you know, they say they can't do this or can't do that. And she's like, what? Um, that is absolutely possible. Like some of the things that were, that sound like conspiracy theory. And this person is like, no, that, that can happen. There's a way for that to happen. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> that's scary. Oh, and then I'm, I'm adding to it the whole, um, I mean, for the last 20 years or so, people have been using this language of like, there's too many people on the planet. There's da, 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 da. There are uh, quote unquote ethicists who have made arguments for causing widespread death for the sake of the planet, for the sake of better human. I mean, they're essentially yeah. like the Thanos option. Like, yeah. it's funny. I watched, I watched the um, <laughs> Avengers movies and I'm like, I know ethicists who have talked like that. Yeah. Um, and so then I'm like, well, you put that together with a coronavirus that sure looks like it's perfectly designed to take out a whole bunch of people. And um, yeah, that's, that's all my tinfoil hat has to say about that. <laughs> like something scary there. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, it's going to be interesting to see how things continue to play out. Yeah, man. And, uh, and hopefully, hopefully, you know, the big igloo doesn't have to happen. The uh, red flag laws get repealed when someone has the balls to take it to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court has the balls to listen to it yeah. and then follow the actual constitution. Let's, let's hope and pray hope. that that actually happens. Yeah. And, uh, and who knows, maybe, maybe the coronavirus is like the flu. Yeah, people die. People die from the flu. Usually yeah. old people and really young people. I mean, mm -hmm. just kind of the weaker parts yeah. of society. Hopefully it's something like that. Yeah. And we just are in this this phase right now where we don't know and we worry more. So Yeah, or if as long as we're hoping, maybe the coronavirus mutates into something that only kills politicians and redcoats. And then <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I mean, like, as long as we're hoping, Pete. Hey, um, I like that. I mean, like, who is on that? <laughs> what? What I would big go so far as to say, is creating that virus. If you've I'm ever run for public office, I'm okay with it going as far as even to that. Yeah, and only if ex it, it only is the and then hey, say it's a twenty percent chance, whatever. But it's only for people who run for office. That um, yeah. You know, I don't know if you, you remember this, but I remember We're reading about. Here. Yeah, of course we are. <laughs> I remember reading about the uh, the Spartans, and uh, the Spartans had two kings at a given time. So one would be the king at home, while the other one was the king out at war. Hmm. And at the end of, like, they served a term, and at the end of your term, you were judged in court for how you were as a king. Ooh! And if you were bad, you were killed. That is amazing. And I was like, man, I like that rule. I think that we should have good. that. You would get the right kind of politicians if you knew at the end of your term you were going to be judged and either killed for yeah. how you you know, were selfish and you were doing stuff yeah. for your own gain as opposed oh, to man. the good of the people. Let's bring that back. Of course, I mean, shoot, you start going through like, you know, war crime stuff with even recent politicians, Ooh, it's going to be bad yeah. for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or just actually, if we look at like the rate of, um, of all the terrible things going on in Congress, man, like the, a lot of them, like most of the people who, who are congressmen or congresswomen could not work in my children's ministry. True. You know, like they that should tell us something track. like, like wouldn't pass the background check to volunteer with children in your average everyday Sunday school church. And yet they run our country and control laws and put people in prison. Usually most of the time for nonviolent offenses. And I'm like, Hmm, like that should all like, we should all be like, this is crazy, man. I just realized like that thing that we just said, that's what's going to get us on a watch list. <laughs> that thing. 
everything else, people are going to be like, well, you guys are whatever that stuff. Once we start calling out what's going on with congressmen, congresswomen, that's when we're on the watch list. Yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> so maybe you should just give Lake Erie their plug. And, yes. Uh, leave All right. Back. So I want to remind everybody, actually, this is a great time to remind about just importance of gear in general. You need to have quality gear. You need to have good gear. It needs to work. Um, check out Lake Erie Arms. As always, we've got everything you need for uh, not only for your ARs and for your hunting guns and everything else, but even like stuff for rebuilding ARs, for repair, stuff you want to have on hand um, in the event of a grid down scenario where you've got to fix your weapon. Um, highly recommend it. As always, check out LER. Net. We've got all kinds of free downloads, all kinds of free stuff. Um, and if you have any trouble with that, by the way, I'm the guy you email when that doesn't work. Usually it does work, but every now and then I've had people not be able to figure it out. Shoot me an email. I can hook you up. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you later. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to the From Concealment Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Be sure to tune in next week for more gun talk. Also, check out the From Concealment website for more shooting-related goodness at fromconcealment.com.